Welcome to the Higher Physics Office Mix on motion graphs and particularly bouncing balls scenarios. What are we looking at in particular? Well, we're looking at how the motion of an object can be represented by a graph. And that motion for bouncing balls with and without energy losses. Now, bouncing ball graphs is actually something that is covered at National 5 level, but only very quickly and uh, probably not well understood because the graphs can look confusing. Hopefully you'll be a bit less confused um, once you've listened and watched this. So let's look at our scenario here. And there's basically two that we can look at. We can look at ones that are fired up or ones that are dropped. Um, this case here, Lydia is firing a ball vertically into the air from the ground. The ball reaches a maximum height, falls, bounces, then rises to a new height. What will it look like? <coughs> so the key thing here to look at initially is she is firing the ball into the air. So if she's firing the ball, it will have a velocity first. Now, we have to decide whether we are going to make up positive or down positive. Generally, we make up positive and down negative. We've got to think about what's happening to the velocity. So if we throw a ball up in the air, it slows down. When it is at its maximum height, it has a velocity of zero. It then accelerates downwards at a constant rate if we ignore air resistance back down. So let's have a look. <coughs> the ball is thrown upwards, so the graph starts with an initial velocity up here. There is then a constant acceleration, slowing the ball down, or deceleration if you prefer, until it, the velocity becomes zero. It is zero at the maximum height. So where it gets to the graph here, is the maximum height. And then what happens? The ball falls down. Now, if we have made the up direction positive, then it, as it comes back down again, it's going to go below the graph. And that's what we see. So this section here at the bottom is as the ball falls down. So here is at the top, this is where we've thrown the ball. Here it's at the top, and then now it's speeding up, it's increasing in velocity, and hits the ground. Happens to hit at the same velocity that we threw it up at, if there is no energy loss. Because all of the potential energy is changed into kinetic energy. So the kinetic energy of our throw is changed into potential energy at the top. The potential energy is changed back into kinetic energy. That's why we can say it's minus U at the bottom here. Then what happens? The ball bounces. If it's not losing any energy, it's going to go back up. In reality, it squashes when it bounces. And so we lose some energy. We're also going to pretend that there is no contact time with the ground. That's wrong too. But for the purposes of our graph, we're going to ignore that. So the ball is going to re rebound with the same acceleration. And so what we get is <coughs> a parallel line. So we've got a vertical line because we've said that it takes no time for the ball to bounce. Not really true, but relatively it's very little. And then it is now going upwards. So this is the up section of the graph, just like this section on the left here was also up. Then it gets to the top and then it would come back down again if we were required to draw any more. If in our real case, it's not going as fast when it bounces off the ground because there's some energy losses. 
as the ball changes shape, the sound of the ball hitting the ground, some friction, then the velocity after rebounding is less. Okay, notice that the lines are parallel. So this line here and that line there are parallel. Remember the slope is equal to the acceleration, which for the case of a ball is the acceleration due to gravity. So it needs to be the same going up and going down because gravity is the same. We could do a calculation to work out the acceleration and here's our acceleration time graph. Acceleration being negative because it's going downwards whereas the velocity was positive because it was going up and that part and then going down and then going back up again. If we changed our mind at the beginning and we said let's make down positive then that would mean that we would have to start down here and we would have a positive slope. So we could get a graph that looked like this one rather than the one before. So here it is going up. When it crosses the axes, it's at zero velocity, so it's at the top. And then here it's going down, <coughs> which we've now said is positive, because that's just our choice. It's just our choice whether we make up positive or down positive. I would recommend you normally stick to up positive but you may be given a diagram and asked to comment which one is correct. So it gets to the bottom, it's bouncing, and then it's going back up there, and it gets to the top there. You can also be asked about dropped balls. The difference between a dropped ball and a thrown ball is a dropped ball has no initial velocity. Usually here, because it's been dropped, down is set as positive. So it's starting at zero. So that's the biggest difference. It's accelerating as it's dropped to its final velocity. So that should actually be V there. And rather than U. And then it's bouncing. So this part here is going down, this part here is hitting the floor, and then that's taking no time and now it's going up because it's a negative answer. Same as before, if there's no energy loss, it's going down to the same value. In the real case, there is some energy loss, so the value is different except on my graph where it actually isn't different. So what should have happened is that the line would be more like that one. Okay, you need to have a straight line. So use a ruler and it needs to be parallel. So that is a straight line parallel to the other line. Thank you for watching and I hope this has helped explain this type of problem. So what do you need to know? You need to know the difference between a graph which has a dropped ball and a thrown ball. And that is the dropped ball will start at zero. The thrown ball will start at a value. You need to be able to identify from the graph where the ball is going up and where the ball is going down. Is it throwing up? Is it dropping down? Where is it bouncing? You need to understand that the slope of the graph is equal to the acceleration. That's always true for a velocity time graph. It's true for these graphs too. So the slope needs to stay the same all the time and it needs to have the right gradient. <coughs>
you need to know how the energy, if the energy is lost, how will the graph look different? Well, the velocity will be decreasing when it gets back to the same point on the graph.